critics of Christianity really like to talk about the Crusades as an evidence of the heinous crimes of Christianity and as part of their arguments that Christianity is unworthy of our belief and faith because it produces such vile fruit. Jesus himself said, you will know a tree by its fruit. The Crusades record some of the most vile and wicked acts that Christians have ever perpetrated on the face of the earth. When the Crusaders victoriously marched into Jerusalem, the Jews sought refuge, sought refuge, excuse me, in their temple, their synagogue temple had already been destroyed, but they sought refuge in their synagogue, which they often refer to as shoal or temple, but which is an assembly. And the Crusaders slaughtered the Jews so that it is said there was a river of blood that when the horses marched through, the blood splattered up onto the horse's bridle. As Christian armies made their way to the Muslim lands, many of the Christian armies were diverted by heretics, the Albigensians and the Waldenses and slaughtered them wholesale within Christian Europe. Other Christian armies making their way through the Eastern Church, Constantinople, and its kingdoms, its reign. I thought, what was the point of marching all the way to Israel to fight the heathen when the Jews live right amongst us. And so they turn their swords in a vile and wicked way against people who were offering no resistance nor rebellion or insurrection, but were slaughtered wholesale merely for the fact that they were Jews. Further crimes were committed by the bishops, by the popes, offering salvation to all those who fought in the Crusades and died in holy war for Holy Mother Church. Such salvation could never be offered to anybody apart from faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, nor do popes or pontificates have any authority to make any decree apart from the decrees that God has ordained in the Bible. No man has the authority to look at somebody else and say, you are saved because you do this work or you don't do that work, you are damned. No man has that authority. I don't care if he's a pope. I don't care if he's a priest. No man has that authority. It's only through the standards of the Bible that we can find how we can earn salvation before God. And it is not by any works that anyone can boast. It is only through faith, through belief, 
a conviction that comes from the heart and never a conviction that is forced upon us by the power of the sword or the power of the gun or the power of the nuclear bomb that can save us because no mere declaration of faith could ever save us. It must come from a faith that is rooted in our heart, from a belief in the resurrection of Jesus that comes from the innermost parts of our being. The crusades, what the Crusades failed to see was a proper importance of the biblical doctrine over the affairs of man. What the Crusades demonstrated at many different levels was a failure of men to grasp the supreme power of God over the power of man to declare how we can be saved, to, be, to declare how we can be made right before God. And it is only through faith in Jesus Christ that God has declared that we may be made righteous. But were the Crusades a necessary evil? I strongly object to many of the practices that go on in the Crusades. Just as I strongly object to many of the practices of the Allied armies during World War II. However, at no point would I argue that the action of the Allied armies during World War II was unnecessary. In the same way, while I would never defend many of the actions of the popes nor many of the actions of the soldiers who fought in the Crusades, I still very much believe in the very core of my being that the Crusades, like World War II, were a very important series of wars that spanned over four centuries that were very necessary and very important for the security and for the protection of Europe against the Muslim hordes. As Robert E. Lee would later say, the best defense is a good offense. And as much as I tactically would have preferred the crusading armies emphasize full forward thrust against present-day Turkey and from the Iberian Peninsula through the north coast of Africa until eventually our dreamer could have been permanently secured, protected from both flanks. And then if I was a master general that could have controlled the course of history, I would have pushed forward into Arabia and eradicated permanently the scourge of Islam, that false religion started by the false prophet Muhammad. If I had been a master strategist advising Pope Urban II, I would have advised not a spear-like thrust into Israel to reclaim Al-Trimer for a hundred years, 
but I would have advocated a more permanent and final solution to the Islamic problem. Islam conquered Arabia through the power of the sword and then conquered North Africa through the power of the sword. I have no hatred against the persons who hold to the doctrine of Islam. However, the militant nature of Islam a religion that commands the destruction of so many countless millions of individuals throughout the course of its history. Like the death cults within Hinduism completely deserves to be destroyed. Like the cannibalistic rituals of New Guinea des deserves to be wiped off the face of the earth. Like the death cults and human sacrifice of Kali Ma within the Hindu tradition deserves to be wiped off. Radical Islam, fundamentalist Islam, which holds to the Quranic teachings of smiting your enemies wherever you find them, this doctrine deserves to be wiped off the face of the earth through the power of the sword. I believe the governments. of the Crusades were fully justified in doing everything they could to secure Europe from the forward thrust of Islam's militism, which has a firm basis in history and which continues to pose a threat to the American homeland today to all of the Western world, but which primarily is a threat to innocent peoples living in Dar Islam, in, in the lands that Islam is currently holding, is in its power today. Such a barbaric and ruthless faith deserves to be wiped out. It's my prayer that the final victory will not be with the power of the sword. I desire the death of no man. I desire the death of no woman or no child. What I desire is for all to come into a knowledge of the truth. What I desire is for the final solution to in no way be a solution of murder, of death. As I've said earlier in this video, in which I will say, again and, and until my dying day, you can never bring a person into a saving faith of Christ through the power of the sword. It has to be done through the power of prayer. The final solution to the evil of Islam cannot be at the point of a drone strike, a missile, or any of the weapons of the modern-day Crusades against the radical evil of Islam. It is only through the power of prayer, through the power
power of the Holy Spirit bringing Muslims across the world into true submission to Allah, into true submission of the living God, Yahweh, the God of the Bible, the God which according to the Quran inspired the Bible and according to the Quran the Word of God can never be changed. It is through the power of the Bible which Muslims acknowledge is the power of God, which Muslims acknowledge is the power of Allah, and the Word of, us, of Allah can never be changed in the Injil and in, in the Torah, in the Gospels and in the Torah. It is only through a saving faith in Jesus Christ, through the liberation and freedom of true life in the gospel, that the death cult of radical Islam, of fundamentalist Islam, can be forever overcome. Never with the power of the sword, Never with the power of the gun or the bomb, but with the almighty power of the gospel, which has the eternal power of God. Will there ultimately be deliverance from all the evils of the earth? One day, there will be no more Islam. One day there will be no more Quran. But Jesus Christ will rule and reign on the earth forever. Now he waits in heaven, putting his enemies under his feet. When all his enemies are subdued, Jesus Christ will return to the earth to rule and reign for a thousand years. And then there will be a new heavens and a new earth. And the first heavens and the first earth will pass away and will be no more. And Jesus Christ will rule and reign on the earth. And millions of Muslims who by that time will have recognized their delusion, will have recognized The absolute absurdity of the false prophet Muhammad, who during their lifetimes recognized that absurdity and accepted the free gift of salvation in Jesus Christ and belief in the Gospels, which even the Quran demands that we accept, by the way, showing that the Quran cannot be true because the Bible, which is the word of Allah, whose word can never change, declares the absolute absurdity of the Quran on many different levels. It's too late for all those millions of Muslims who have died under the delusion of Islam. Those who die in faith apart from Jesus Christ have no hope of salvation, are lost forever in hell. But I believe there are millions of Muslims alive today and who will be alive in the future who will recognize the delusion of Islam, who will come into a true, living, and vibrant faith with the real God, with true religion, in Jesus Christ and find deliverance from the great evil of Islam. A deliverance which can never come from the sword. A deliverance which can never come from bombs. But a deliverance which is true and which is real. And which we who are missionaries must deliver to the Muslims across the world so that in Jesus they can have hope 